Hello and welcome back to the workshop. On the last video I installed a mainspring. On this video I'm going to be making a bezel for this chapter ring. On the original plans it suggests that you glue this chapter ring to the pillars but I don't like the idea of that so I'm going to make a bezel and I'll be using screws or I'll be using glue. But first of all I'm going to make some pillars and dial feet. Here's a drawing of the dial pillars I'll be making and the dial feet. I will be making a few changes like this bit here. I'm going to have it raised a bit more to give a bit more thread there. And also I'm not going to do an 8BA thread on the end. I'm going to drill and tap 10BA. That will enable me to reposition this all to a bit more suitable place once the clock's finished. Right, what I'm going to do now is turn, turn one of the pillars. <laughs> Right, before I uh, part it off, I'm going to give it a bit of a polish. So I'll do that and then we'll see what it looks like. What I'm going to do now is drill and tap this M2. This is going to be used for holding on the dial feet. Right, that's that done. That's the dial pillars complete. What I did, I put it back in the lathe, drill and tap 10BA in the end, turn some dial feet and drill and tap 10BA in the end of those. 
What I need to do now is strip the clock down and get the frames ready for drilling. What I need to do now is drill the holes for the pillars. The centre line diameter of the chapter ring is 98mm diameter, so I want a radius of 49 One way of doing this is to use a depthing tool. You can use marking out blue or a black pen for this. Right, there's my depthing tool. I've already preset this distance for me to here, 49mm and I'll be using the trumpet runner because I'm going for my hole. So once that's dried, I'll mark them out. Should be dry now, I think. Oops. There you are. Now what you do then, put it on the milling machine, pick up those points with that, with the centre. That's what I need to mark this as well. And then drill the holes once we've got this, using this centre finder. But that's one way of doing it, but I won't be doing it that way because I need to match the holes in the bezel. I prefer to use the digital readout, but to be able to do that, I need to know this angle from here to here. So what I do know is the distance between this hole and this hole is 61.4, and from that one to that one is 62. So here's my little triangle. So I've got 30.7 and 62. So I'm easy, I can calculate the angle at 29.68 and I want 49mm radius using the same angle and that gives me X and Y. So what I'll do, set it up on the milling machine and we'll drill the holes. Right, I'm set up on the milling machine and I've clocked up true. i clocked along this edge and i clocked the clocked the centre wheel hole. Just a demonstration, I'll show you how you can use the pointer to pick up the marking out. Uh, line that up by eye, I was actually 48.97, so I went far off, so but I'm not using that method. I'm gonna set me read that now to uh, 49. The clearance hole for 10BA is 1.8, so that's what I'll be drilling it. Right, next, using these coordinates, I'll position for the next one.
Right, that's that done. I'll put it back on the bench now. Right, that's the holes drilled. And at least now I know that the holes are exactly 49 mil to the centre hole. What I'm going to do now is put on the pillars. That's how it looks. The original design for this clock is to glue these dial feet on the back of the, the chapter ring. And you can simply just place the chapter ring on the top like that. But I won't be doing that because I'm going to make a bezel. But for now I'm going to reassemble the clock. Now I'm going to put the motion work wheels back. These uh, motion work wheels are just reminding me of something which I'm going to show you now. To make this clock you have to, you'd have to purchase three cutters. A 0.75 module, a 0.6 and the, the plan show 0.55 to make the motion works. But if you don't want to purchase three cutters you can use the 0.6 like I did in this clock. It just means you have to recalculate a different diameter. I've already done it, I've wrote it in pen here, so instead of being 1.440, it, it becomes 1.559. So I've wrote in pen that size, that one, and that one. Right, what I've done now is I've reassembled the clocks with the new pillars. At the beginning of this video, I said I was going to make the bezels, but I think, I think that would have made this video too long, so that's going to be my next video. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.